Wallabies and Springboks, folks. First game between these two sides of the Rugby Championship 2022. It's the Aussies who get the win. Their win record over the South Africans in Australia continues, and it's pretty impressive. Uh, pretty impressive record for them. 25 points to 17. We're about to watch the All Blacks in Argentina, so I better get through this as quick as we can, but there are a fair few talking points, so if I have to start that game a few minutes delayed, so be it. In Adelaide, oval pitch, which is not ideal, but really great weather, great crowd, great way to get your weekend underway if you guys are waking up in South Africa. Um, you may have missed the first try if you were still making your coffee because it only took a minute for Fraser McCright to go over. Aussie securing the restart. I have a mum and dad here, so we were kind of chatterboxing away uh, while watching the game as well. So I may have missed a few things, but I mean, I think it was Arnold that won the restart, or the start uh, of the game. And um, Valtini, big carry, Nick White distribution, and R McCright, one minute, goes over. 7-0 lead. And it's like 10-0 after seven minutes because they get a penalty in front as well. So... Uh, really cracking start from the Aussies, relentless. They keep it up like Marika Corombetti, uh, kick chase pressure on Fumulin, so they, they get a breakdown penalty, but then Fumulin kind of makes up for it when he strips Ikitao in the tackle. So I think that's the kind of turning point in maybe the momentum, because up until that uh, turnover, like when Fumulin himself had been uh, pinged at the breakdown, um, it was looking like South Africa weren't at the races, but maybe that's the turning point. Um, Dweber's first throw doesn't go straight, which is a little bit concerning because he had issues there uh, against Wales and in the last game he played, but he goes off for blood, and I think the South African lineup finishes like 80%, so it's actually not too bad, but from, um, Dweber must only play like 30 minutes because he misses part of the first half and doesn't come back on in the second, but good experience for him. I kind of wish his role was, was reversed. But anyway, the roles are what they are. That's um, for the coaching setup to to get sorted. Um, Pollard shanks his first penalty. And three points would have been a really good return on that point. It's like 14 minutes. And that's about as much possession as the Springboks have had. They've had 17% possession. If they could have come away with three points from 17% possession, that would have been a win. But he shanks it. But South Africa are definitely finding their feet. Diaka had a line break. Um, Faf de Klerk got pinged for like a high tackle, so the Wallabies managed to get an exit. But then um, later on, Mal Herber wins, wins them another penalty chance with a scrum. So the, the momentum meter, if it was like on the screen, had been full Australia, and it's slowly ticking its way back South Africa's way at that point. They opted for the three, but Pollard missed again. And remember, I don't think Pollard had missed any kicks up until this game in the Rugby Championship. Those six points had gone a big one. The third one, which is directly in front, he finally nails. And I would have said if he got that one, someone else would have needed to take over the kick-in. But 10 points to three after 23 minutes. Malcolm Marks doing a Beast and Tawira impression when he um, held up uh, Peter Steph to toy. And Peter Steph went way too far back and he had to kind of pull him back without dropping him. If you remember that moment from the Beast years ago, it was pretty much the same thing again. So uh, some pretty impressive strength from the man, but still only three points on for the ball, on the board for the box. Not as impressive. Uh, Dweber's back on not long after, though, and his next line out, interestingly, didn't get contested in the air by the Wallabies. And I would have thought, man, come on, like, the guy's under pressure, and his first line out throw has not gone well. Contesting the air. I know you're worried about the Springboks maul, but maybe contesting the air... They get pinged at mall time as well, and they're on yellow card warning at this point by the um, by the ref because the Wallabies have been under the pump. Like the, the momentum's fully shifted. They've been really, really getting pinged. So the Africa go again, and this time the Wallabies did steal it in the air, although they could only really tap it back and force it because they couldn't really control the ball. Nick White only just bet, I think it was Evan Etzebeth, uh to the ground. So, yeah, really kind of hanging on. Are the Wallabies at this point, but they are hanging on. That's the kind of key point. South Africa get a scrum penalty again. Vermeulen goes for a quick tap. Tom Wright's not back on side. He gets yellow carded because it's just been accumulating too many penalties. Uh, it's all South Africa. They scrum again. And then somehow Australia get a scrum penalty and they escape. So this is what I'm talking about. They're hanging on by the skin of their teeth. And um, I just watched Sia Khaleesi basically speak at the end of the, uh, the game. And he said basically... Um, they just didn't take their chances, especially in the first half. And I agree with that assessment. Like, how many times? I mean, Pollard, six points from the boot. And then just, I mean, you got to give some credit to the Wallabies guys for getting out of jail. But, um, yeah, man, the, the, the box should have had a try by this point, surely. Um, Fumulin gets a turnover later on. And then as they're trying to counterattack from the turnover ball, and Peter Steff ends up chucking it into touch. It's just like lacking that kind of clinical edge. It's just, it's just a wee bit... 
it's a wee bit messy. Although then um, Australia's next line out throw from that throw into touch is not straight. So it's it's kind of gone a wee bit to custard from both sides. Um, the penalty count though, it's killing the Aussies. South Africa's not opting for the threes. I mean, I guess right's in the bins. So they're trying to go for the jugular. I kind of feel like if, if Pollard had had his boots on and they just kept um, whacking over the threes, you probably get in front not too long because the penalty count for Australia gets pretty bad. They're still not really competing in the air. There's more and more advantage. It's another yellow card winning. Fine Gaa gets pinged for kind of coming in at the side. That one in itself could have been a card, but they go with the warning. And uh, South Africa go again. They get it wide. And um, this is the moment which I think is going to be a little bit controversial. One of them. Because uh, with Tom Wright, the right winger, in the bin... There's space out in the backfield, and uh, Mapimpi steaming onto it, but and he's beaten Hodge for pace for sure. But Corin Betty is absolutely coming across like a missile, and he smashes into Mapimpi. That's all over social media. I've already had a quick look, and um, yeah, it's being praised as either man, what a great covering tackle, or. Oh my God, you can't do that. That's a no-arms tackle. And uh, they did have a quick look at it. I think the ref was like, man, it looks a bit ugly. Uh, so they did have a quick look at it, and Brendan Pickerel gave it a once over and said it's fine because there's an arm in there. And I think I saw the angle that he was um, looking at when I saw it as well because I thought, oh yeah, there's an arm in there. But then there's like one reverse angle where it looks pretty bad. And there's another angle where it looks kind of slightly bad. So... Yeah, that one, he might have gotten a bit lucky. I don't know, that's one of those ones where you can kind of, you know, freeze frame it. I've only, I've seen it like three times, and then quickly on social media, but the social media one, I'm not going to bother because it's too small on the phone. But yeah, it's one of those ones, if you probably freeze frame it, you can you can come to a conclusion, but um, certainly a touch and go one. But as it stands, it's a great cover and tackle. Oh my goodness, did he have to steam across it and stop that try? And he does it, he's an absolute missile. So um, yeah, they, they give it that it's all good. And then to kind of, if the box were kind of a bit aggrieved that that one went against them, it gets worse. Because um, from the scrum, uh, Faf de Klerk's trying to kind of harass Nick White at the back of that scrum as he's trying to get the ball out, as scrum halves all do to each other. And then he, he kind of gives Nick White a wee tap to the face. He gives him a wee tap, doesn't he? And... Um, my note is, as it's happening, Nick White's milked it, for sure, because he, he pauses and then goes down like he's been grievously hurt. Thank goodness he's all right. But, um, yeah, then uh, they they stop the game to have a look at it, and uh, the ref ends up getting the cards out of his pocket, and Faf goes to the bin for 10. That's a yellow card for, for striking, I think he said. I don't remember. Um... Nick White in the face. Now, Nick White has milked that all day long. Um, first, I think, and what my notes say, Faf shouldn't be doing that. If you tap someone else in the face, you're putting yourself in the ref's hands. But then, I also hate the fact that players milk stuff because uh, we all know that sometimes guys stay down a bit longer or they try to milk stuff because they want the TMO to go back and have a look at it if they feel like they've been kind of hard done by. Because... There is no referee in like a captain's challenge. And honestly, when they trialed captain's challenges, I hated them because I thought they slowed the game down a lot. But um, yeah, so with no captain's challenge, guys like to milk stuff or Hollywood stuff to um, to get the attention to it. And it worked a treat for Nick White because Faf got yellow card, but that's a soft yellow, man. I know you can't be doing that. Like I said, you, first, first wrong is Faf. You can't be doing that. You can't be touching somebody else in the face like that. But it really was a touch, wasn't it? pretty terrible and i know i've watched a bit of ice hockey and they've got they, they penalize guys for um i don't think they call it simulation but they call it something else basically trying to get penalties by pretending to be hurt they penalize you for that and that's the kind of attitude i think rugby should be taken they shouldn't be rewarding milking penalties and as i said i know faf is in the wrong to start with but the pause and then oh going to the ground nah man that's not cool I don't want to see rugby go that way. It's part of the reason I couldn't keep watching football like when I used to watch it like more than 10 years ago because it just became embarrassing. But anyway, Faf gets yellow carded 
it's half time. Uh, position and territory actually go South Africa's way after having not much early. Um, penalties conceded as 10 to 5. The Wallabies have been under the pump in that regard. Their lineouts 4 from 8. The Springboks is not much better, 5 from 7. But the Springboks' second half lineouts fine, whereas the Wallabies continue kind of have issues. Second half, despite the fact they've got a man in the bin, the South Africans are reading the Aussie attack pretty well. Um, although eventually. They, uh, they do manage to get a try from Marika Korombedi, pretty much with a one-on-one against Andre Pollard. It makes Andre Pollard look pretty silly. It's a, it's a pretty bad defensive step from, uh, from Pollard. He gets caught absolutely on the wrong foot. And uh, 15 points to three, the Wallabies are starting to look pretty good. They missed the conversion at the post, but that's five points during the yellow. Um, Fine uh, gets pinned for a no-arms tackle, so it's maybe a chance for the um, South Africans to kind of come back into it as a bit of a let-off. From a uh, from the Wallabies pressure, which has just been starting to build, but um, Aussie's mall defense is okay. Um, and you notice in this game, the ball was like bouncing a lot more on the hard turf because eh? it's mostly like a cricket and AFL ground, right? The ball seemed to bounce a couple more bounces than it would on a more traditional rugby turf. So I think that was a little bit. Sometimes we saw the balls getting kicked a little bit long when they were hitting the grass. Um, Fifty six minutes though, uh, the Aussies get what is probably their best try of the game. And that one, because up until that point, the South Africans, like I mentioned, they've been reading the attack. Like there's one move where they get it to Slipper, who then gets it back to, I think, is it Lolisio? Like it's kind of a one-two move. And then they just read it like a book every time. They knew Slipper was going to pass it that way. But this time they change the direction and Slipper goes back on the inside to Lolisio, who's in a big old gap pretty much next to the ruck. And then uh, he gets the ball out the back to um, to McCry, who gets the second try of the game. And that point, it's pretty much game over, isn't it? 22 points to three. Well, I mean, the next penalty is really the game over because it's a three-score game. That's on about 60 minutes. And the fact that they're bringing Elton, Jan- Elton Yankees on, they're bringing on Hendricks, uh, they've brought on France Day, and he's just knocked it on. And that's what led to the, the penalty, which makes it 25-3. Three-score lead with 20 minutes to go. I think it's pretty much game. But, um, yeah... Tough stuff. I mean, the box do mount a comeback. And remember, at that point, the, the Wallabies are sitting in bonus point territory, which is not where you want to be for the Springboks' point of view. Um, Quaker Smith gets pinged for not releasing. The Aussies are going for the jugular. I mean, they might have got a bonus point if they scored there, but they knock it on the line out. And then it's kind of all the box. They really have to start speeding up the game. And they looked all right when they did it. Maybe the Wallabies are taking their foot off the gas. Or maybe the box was nothing to lose. They were just throwing caution to the wind. Khaleesi wins a turnover. Kits off. Uh, I think he gets it to um, Cock, who's got a line break. Quarker Smith goes over for a try, so 25-10. That takes the bonus point away. TMO stops the game to check like if Lolisio has batted the ball forwards, but it's backwards. That's the kind of stoppage that I can't stand from the TMO. Brendan Pickerel got that one wrong. Um, anyway, minus that one. More relentless attack from Australia. Valtini gets a yellow card because, again, it's more penalties conceded on the trot. Uh, Quarker Smith with the tap from... Five meters out, they can't stop him. Quaker Smith's not a not a big guy. Quaker Smith is, I don't know, he's he's a rugby player, so he's a, he's a unit. But man, he did really well. Got really low. They should have stopped him, but they can't. Uh, Twenty five points to seventeen. Elton takes the conversion quickly, um, but no time to continue. That's full time, so no chance to get the bonus point for South Africa. Obviously, uh, Australia lose the bonus point, which they had. Uh, in the bag when it was 22-3. But, um, yeah, interesting game, man. Run meters 266 to 328 to the spring box. Kicks from hand is 20 a piece. The box finished with more position, 54%, more territory, 58%. But concerningly for the box, 14 turnovers conceded to eight, of which nine are knock-ons. Nine knock-ons is more than the total number of turnovers conceded from the Wallabies. That's um, a bit concerning, but um, they did offload 10 times to four. So sometimes the passes don't stick, but especially I think in the first half, the well, the second half of the first half, if you will say the second quarter of the game, uh, the box needed to score, but they um, they just couldn't get it done. So yeah, pretty frustrating then, but I mean, well done to the Wallabies for hanging on for dear life at times, be it the mall defense, be it the scrums that got you know penalties at least once when they needed to. Um, man, they hung on, and they piled on the points in the second half. Um, Aussie lineout finishes 7 from 13, which is not great. 
the box finish eight from ten, which is actually pretty decent. Um, penalties conceded fifteen to nine. So once again, um, the Springboks are on the right side of the penalty count, but um, wrong side of the ledger. It was the same in that second game against the All Blacks. Um, individuals: Ikitao, five defenders beaten. Samu comes off the bench, makes nine from ten tackles. Maybe that's kind of uh, a bit of a boost from the extra forward that they had on the bench with the 6-2 split. He was really able to come on and go all guns blazing. Khaleesi and Diaka are your top tacklers for the box with 10 from 12. Diaka has also got a line break in there. Uh, Arm has three defenders beaten. Smith comes off the bench and he's like the third equal top run meter guy for the spring box. Crocker Smith, if you're looking for impact, really came on and, um, and made something of it. But... Um, yeah, there you go, folks. 25 points to 17. Congratulations to the Wallabies. Good win. Um, but I do feel like that that Faf yellow card especially is going to be a heck of a talking point. And like I said, I, I can't stand guys faking that injuries were worse than they were. But I do understand why they do it because they want to get the TMO to check an offense against them. But that being said, I, I don't think that kind of stuff should get rewarded. I think it's a slippery slope. So, anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts. 25-17, good one. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to sit down and watch the All Blacks take on the Pumas. Take care, guys. Talk to you again soon. See you later.